Welcome everybody to our Heat Smart case study webinar series. I'm just going to give people just another minute to sign on. So um, make yourselves comfortable, grab another cup of coffee, and we'll be getting going in just a moment. I'm going to also get us going live on Facebook now. So um, let people trickle in, but we'll get started here because we want to get um, through our presentations and make time for your questions and make sure that we are done um, by one o'clock at the latest. So welcome again. My name is Lisa Marshall. I am the Heat Smart Program Director, Heat Smart um, Tompkins, but we also cover Chemung County, which is actually where I live. Um, and we um, have a great presentation for you today from one of our newest partners, Lamort Electric, which is based right up in Danby. And we have, um, they're going to walk you through their project of a recent install in Fall Creek, and we have the homeowner on with us. So thanks, Armin, for joining us. So um, Zoom protocol, make sure you're muted during the presentation. Um, feel free to type questions into the chat during the presentation, and then afterwards, you, um, people will be able to unmute and ask questions either out loud or, or typed questions work too. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen, and we'll get started here. Um, with our presentation. Oh, whoops, I keep doing that. So hold on. I don't wanna show you the Facebook Live. What I wanna show you is my slides. Okay, now I'm gonna share my screen. So as I said, I'm Lisa Marshall with Heat Smart Tompkins and we are a community nonprofit. We don't make any profit off of any sales. Uh, we're just here for education, outreach and support to the community. Uh, to think about home and building energy efficiency improvements that you can make, uh, which will save you money, increase your home comfort, and be also a very important key solution to, um, to climate change, um, to reducing our carbon emissions. And I've recently, so we call that the fourth, four C's, the cost, the comfort, and the climate. And I've recently answered, added this fourth C of convenience, because I'm finding more and more people really are seeking a more convenient heating solution than the one they have right now. So as I said, we are um, called Heat Smart. We're one of the 20 or so NYSERDA clean heating and cooling communities around the state. NYSERDA is the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, and that's who funds Heat Smart. So actually it's funded by all of you every month when you pay your utility bill, you pay a small charge called the systems benefit charge. And that's what funds NYSERDA and all of their great energy programs and pays um, the bills here at Heat Smart. So thank you so much for doing that. But I love to show this um, slide, not only to show how many, um, how many New Yorkers are served by these Heat Smart programs, but also it's a little bit of bragging rights for Heat Smart Tompkins because before NYSERDA got involved, we actually pioneered the idea of the Heat Smart program. And NYSERDA thought it was such a good idea that they decided to fund us and to make it a statewide program. And we're really, really proud of the role we've played in um, moving this work forward in New York. So why the heck do we need such a thing as a local community-based clean heating and cooling nonprofit like Heat Smart? That is because um, most of you already know this, probably all of you, we find ourselves in the midst of what we call the climate crisis or the climate emergency. Um, you know, just yesterday, uh, we had some extreme weather um, that came over from California, hit us in the state, causing some uh, pretty bad problems. And, and, you know, this kind of extreme weather is getting worse and worse each year because of the mounting heat in the atmosphere. And that heat is there because it's trapped by the so-called greenhouse gases. Those are um, come from many sources, but the main uh, source of these greenhouse gases is the burning of fossil fuels. So we have to figure out as a state, as a country, as a nation, as a humanity, how we're gonna work together to reduce these greenhouse gas emissions. Because for the last 200 years, we've emitted more of them each year than we did the year before. So this is a pretty tough nut to crack um, and we're all figuring it out together. The first thing we have to look at is where do the emissions come from? And here in New York, a, about a third of those emissions come from the on-site combustion of fossil fuels in our buildings. And in fact, I disagree with this graphic. I would actually consider this to be a bigger source than transportation because this does not include 
the leaked methane from the gas that, it, that most of us are using to heat our buildings. And now we're very fortunate that we've passed a law in New York that actually requires us to reduce those emissions. That's called the CLCPA or the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. And so as a state, we're working together to figure out how to um, actually make that law a reality and heat smart is a, is a small part of that. So when we look at how we use energy in our houses, um, we can see from this graphic, this is Minnesota, but it's not too different than New York, another cold climate state. The majority is heating and air conditioning and actually most of that is heating. I wish, I, I need a different graphic that really shows that air conditioning is a tiny sliver. Uh, a lot of New Yorkers don't have any air conditioning, uh, me included. So it's mostly heating. And then um, our water heating is also a big piece, about 15%. I've seen also 17% or 20% for the average New York home. So these two areas, heating and water heating, are what we focus on at HeatSmart on trying to figure out how to do those more efficiently um, so that we use less energy and, um, and reduce those fossil fuel emissions. So our re recommendations are to sort of do a couple of things. One is to assess the building envelope. That's um, the insulation and the air sealing in your building or your home. Um, because basically, no matter how what technology you're using to create that warm air on a cold day or air conditioned air on a cool day, you want that conditioned air to stay inside the building with you instead of go right out the window or right out the roof. Um, so it's important to look at the building envelope. And secondly, and um, what we talk about the most at HeatSmart is our space heating and cooling. And what we recommend for that are the highly efficient technology of heat pumps, air source heat pumps and ground source heat pumps. Um, heat pumps are really efficient because they don't create the heat. They take heat that already exists. It's actually the sun's thermal energy out of the air and out of the ground and they move it around and make it useful for heating a home, a building, a space. Um, and they can also be used in reverse to provide cooling or air conditioning. And that same technology can also be used to heat your hot water. So here's some different kinds of heat pumps. On the left here, we have the classic air source heat pump um, called a mini split. And that's, um, I think, what um, you're going to hear about in the case study later on today. These are very uh, practical and adaptable little units. The, this is the outdoor compressor. This is the line that the refrigerant goes through and it goes to an indoor either floor or wall mounted head that distributes the warm or cool air. Um, in the middle here, we have the ground source heat pumps, sometimes called geothermal heat pumps. So what happens here is you have a, a either vertical or horizontal uh, loop field in the ground that collects the heat from the from the ground which is about 50 degrees all year round and takes that into the house here's the heat pump that actually um, puts that um, that warmed water through a refrigerant process and then distributes the cool or the warm air in through the house and this little guy can also um, these these ground source heat pumps can also be configured to heat your hot water as well and then this is the standalone heat pump water heater it's basically just an electric resistance water heater, but with this little heat pump on top that preheats the water. And because the heat pump is doing that preheating, it's much more efficient than a standard electric water heater. Um, just a quick note about insulation and air sealing. Um, this, together, we call these two um, things weatherization, home weatherization. And insulation is like wearing this warm wool sweater uh, it definitely helps keep your house warm, but it doesn't seal that air inside. So um, for that, you need this windbreaker on top of the sweater to, um, and that's the air sealing part. Sometimes people are confused about insulation versus air sealing. It's even more confusing because some products like spray foam do both at the same time. They both insulate and air seal. So um, that's the end of my presentation. I'm um, looking forward to hearing from Sarah Schnabel from Lamort. But first, I'm going to play you a um, little video that we made about um, Lamort Electric our, our, um, when they joined the Heat Smart program earlier this summer. And I just wanted to see to make sure that we were optimized for um, playing this video. So I'm going to do that. OK, so. Hi, I'm 
Brian Lamore. Hi, I'm Sarah Schnabel. We are the co-owners of Lamort Electric Heating and Cooling. Um, I've owned Lamort Electric for about 11 years now. I've been a contractor. Uh, I really enjoy the work and I've had an interest for a long time in trying to help people save energy and now it's become a matter of using energy differently. This is my partner and girlfriend, Sarah Schnabel. Mm -hmm. Yes, hi. I've been with Lamore Electric since I graduated college in 2017. Um, I've, owned, I've, <laughs> I've been an owner of the business since 2018 and we've gone through a lot of transitions in that period, starting out just with electric work with Brian and I in the field and transitioning into doing um, heat pumps which has required me to do a lot more of the ad administration work because there's a lot more in designing the systems and in uh, applying for the rebates and things like that. I'm more the back end person. I, I help with estimates. We go out and do a, a heat load calculation. and So I do a lot of the sitting behind the computers unless I'm at someone's house doing an estimate. Um, I help a little bit with the estimate on the front end, though Sarah really does most of the design. Um, she orders the material, I show up with the trailer and start the install. Um, we've had one employee who's been with us for a few years now and uh, he's worked out great. We're getting ready to hire another one. We really like Mitsubishi because they've been around the longest. Uh, they're the most established, and as we were talking to different suppliers, they were by far the best at support and training and making sure we have everything that we need to do a good job. Yeah, I don't think we would have been able to make the transition into doing, having heat pumps be pretty much our sole um, business without Mitsubishi support and their training. And they have the longest warranty, which is nice. <laughs> Our process when somebody hires us, uh, once they approve an estimate, is we get a deposit check and we order the gear right away and then we put it here in our shop so that it's ready to go by the time we're scheduled for your install. I think one of our big things is attention to detail and we also want to be very thoughtful about how people use their space because these systems are so versatile that one multiple different people can have multiple different designs and they will operate somewhat differently and especially for comfort so we do um, take a lot of spend a lot of time with uh, individual customers going over their existing system what they want what their goals are um, usually our estimates are anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half and that's a mix of me going around taking measurements of the house and Brian answering questions or me chiming in with answers and things like that. So we do t uh, spend a lot of time with our estimates with people. We joined the HeatSmart um, program uh, for a couple reasons. One, we would like to grow and two, we think that changing our, our heating systems in homes is one of the biggest ways to combat climate change. Um, getting rid of our own personal combustion engines in our houses is, uh, is the goal. back to my slides here. Um, yeah. So actually I need to stop sharing because without any further ado, after that introduction, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah herself um, to share this really fun um, example of some of the work they um, do right here in Tompkins County. So take it away, Sarah. Sure. Okay. I will screen share. Can you all see that? Looks great. Okay. Well, uh, I won't have, I had some notes on uh, our little bit of our history, but most of that was covered uh, in that video. So let's see if I know how to control this. Oh, there we go. So yeah, we started, uh, or Brian started the business in 2010 um, as an electrical contractor. We started moving into, uh, heating and cooling in around mid to late 2018. Um, our main goal was to install heat pumps, but we kind of started with like a lot of everything. So we were, if we couldn't convince someone that a heat pump was right for them, then we, we 
had a few installs where we would uh, swap out someone's furnace or things like that, but it just didn't feel right based on uh, our own philosophies for uh, the climate crisis that we're in right now. Uh, so toward uh, middle of 2019, we made the decision to no longer touch anyone's fossil fuel system unless it was to decommission it. Um, yes, and then uh, we uh, became Heat Smart Partners, what was it, the end of July of this year, 2021, so fairly new. Uh, what else was I going to say? <laughs> One of, um, I think this is a good word to kind of describe us as a business and where we see ourselves going, uh, but Brian likes to call himself an electrificationist. Try and say that three times fast. Um, where we're trying to move all of our um, energy consumptions to electric because that's the only potentially renewable source. I know there's issues with where we get our um, electric and things like that, but you can't do that without changing everything over in your houses. Um, but so we um, we can do all of the electric work. So we do service upgrades, car chargers, water heaters, and air source heat pumps. So it's all that kind of electrifying your home where, uh, yes, okay. So the house that we're talking about today, um, we chose because it's a very typical install style for us. It's also a very typical house for the Ithaca area. Um, it's a Fall Creek house. It's over 100 years old. It was built in 1890. It's a roughly 1,500 square feet, uh, and it, it's a three-bedroom house all on the second floor, and it has a natural gas furnace, which is very common for that area. As soon as you get outside of the city, there's a lot more um, boilers, and then you get a lot more um, oil and propane and things like that, but um, we thought this was a good example because of so going into this house, because it, I knew it was 100 years old, we had it, some houses in the Fall Creek area are have had no insulation or air sealing upgrades. But this house is, is an example of having done all of the necessary work before considering the air source heat pump. So this house had all blown in insulation in all the walls and in the attic. Um, and then in there, uh, the rim joist, which is in the basement up at the top where it's slightly exposed was also sealed. And those are like the big things that we look for when we're going on a site visit is we don't wanna put in a heat pump that's just gonna have your heat leave through your walls or your attic, your attic is the big one. Um, this house, we also previously, I think about a year ago or so, um, upgraded their electrical service. So they had the appropriate electrical capacity and they had a level two charger. And down here in the corner, you can see my little uh, insulation inspector, my cat who's uh, totally destroyed our insulation in the walls, but she helps me with my estimate all the time. Um, so before, actually I'll just go through this first and then we'll, um, have Armin, the homeowner, uh, give us a little bit of um, his thoughts on the process. So after we had completed our site visit, um, I usually, I come home, our site visits are on Fridays. So Mondays and Tuesdays, I do all of our heat load calculations and then I come up with a design. This one, there were two options that we could consider. Um, we could have considered replacing the furnace with, uh, with an air handler that would, uh, looks somewhat like the furnace, but because this house was ducted for heating, there wasn't adequate um, return on the second floor. So for air conditioning, it wouldn't operate quite as well. And you would also lose out on the comfort of zoning um, the system. And a lot of people just don't like ductwork because you're moving dust and things around your house through this uh, air handler. So the design we ended up coming with, uh, coming up with is a very typical for how we lay it out. We like having multiple smaller um, outdoor compressors um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the one-to-one -one units, which is this one in the bottom left corner, is um, it's one outdoor compressor to one indoor unit, one indoor high wall, which looks like this one. I don't, can you guys see my cursor? Yes. Okay, it looks like this one. 
And you can also see the picture down here that shows it's one outdoor compressor to one indoor. Um, those are very efficient. Um, the Mitsubishi came out with this year, their Hyperheat Plus. So most of their hyperheats, which are their cold climate heat pumps, will uh, heat at 100% capacity down to five degrees, but these hyperheat plus models will go down to negative five degrees. And you also get more um, capacity, heating capacity out of them. So we had one of these one-to-ones for the larger kitchen area, which had a vaulted ceiling, which means it needed a slightly more heating because the, you'll have to heat the air above it before it gets <laughs> down to the lower portion. Um, and then it also covers their office, which I believe Armin is in right now, because there's a fairly large um, opening in between the two and it points right at it. And then, uh, then we had a uh, three zone um, multi zone system, which covered the two, there's a unit in each of the two larger bedrooms upstairs, and then one for the living room slash entryway. Uh, we did not put a unit in the smallest bedroom on the second floor because it was quite small, about 90 square feet or so. And it also already had an electric baseboard in there for supplemental heating. It's also a room that they don't tend to use that often. Um, so, so cost for this system, um, the cost would have been around 18,500 minus the rebate from NYSERDA or NYSEG kind of both uh, at about um, $4,800. And then whenever we do a job that is a check payment, we build in a slight amount for financing charges and things like that into our amount. So people who pay with uh, cash is honestly a little harder. We like checks because it's easy for me to mobile deposit on my phone, but there's a 5% discount for that. So then the cost of the homeowner for this one was just under 13,000. And the way we deal with payments is we do a deposit, especially with current supply chain issues. We try and get that as soon as we can and order material. There is, uh, unfortunately, I'm hearing some water heater issues for the brand that we use, um, not being able to get in in the next couple months, but that's a whole other issue. So that's our cost breakdown. And there's my little cat smudge helping me out with my estimates, totally rolling around. I'm surprised she's not on the keyboard. She usually is. <laughs> And uh, benefits to, uh, for this system. I think, I'm, I'm sure Armin can speak to this, but uh, I know AC was a, a consideration. Um, the zoned comfort is also um, beneficial because you can zone it. Um, each, of the, each of the high wall units from the previous slide has its own controller and you can control one room when you're not in there, you can turn it down if you want. We don't recommend having it too drastic of a change just because the way these units operate, they like to kind of maintain the temperature in the spaces. Um, as far as cost of operation, because this is a natural gas furnace um, swap out, well, we left it in place, but uh, because we're replacing the natural gas, we, we say the cost is about um, equal, but I don't know if anybody's been reading the news, but it looks like natural gas prices are gonna be starting to go up and I don't see that changing in the next five to 10 years for the lifespan of this system or 15 to 20 probably is more like the um, range. But I know for our own house, when we, um, we swapped out a similar uh, natural gas furnace and we ended up saving a little money because the one half of our house is almost never used. Um, so that's on a separate system that we turn off when uh, Brian's kids aren't at home. And uh, oh, also the, because a lot of ductwork is somewhat older installed, unless it's like brand new construction, a lot of it is not sealed very well or insulated well. So there's a lot of duct loss, um, which can help with these, uh, help with some costs. Um, I think the climate impact was covered very well by HeatSmart. That's the main reason we're doing this. Um, and health and safety. Um, Air quality, I think, is a good one, especially when you're replacing a ducted system. You are no longer running all your air that you're breathing through these, these ducted systems that are like, who knows when the last time they were cleaned. Most people have never had their um, ducted systems cleaned. But this is not a, um, there's a, a story I have, not from this house, but a recent house that we just did an install for. Um, we had them lined up to do their install in December. Um, they called us, they said they had 
they had a natural gas steam boiler, those steam radiators. And they were gonna try and just get it up and running until we came in and did our install in December. But they had someone come out and check out their system before they turned it on, which is good because it turns out the system, they had just moved into the house, but it turns out that system was spewing carbon monoxide into their house. So had they just turned it on, they hopefully they had uh, batteries in their CO detectors, but that is always a consideration when you have any kind of combustible gas in your house. Um, but yeah, that was a little bit of a scare. So we bumped them up in our schedule and got their install done last week, I think. Um, and then there's our little dog enjoying his heat pump in, in our living room. I say little, he's 130 pounds, but. <laughs> um, okay, and then if you were interested in considering heat pumps as your option, uh, the best way to reach out to us or any of the HeatSmart contractors is to go to, to uh, HeatSmart's uh, enroll page, which is, they started out at Solar Tompkins, but solartompkins.org forward slash enroll. Um, when you fill out that enrollment form, you can have the option of choosing um, one or multiple of the six installers for either air sealing or heat pumps. Um, and then if you choose us, you will automatically get an uh, automated email from me introducing ourselves. So that does kind of make the process quite simple. Did I cover everything? Oh, there was one thing I wanted to cover, why we didn't consider a hybrid water heater in this house. Um, they had a fairly new um, on-demand natural gas water heater, but with this house, this is also um, something that is very typical for the downtown area in Ithaca, is very, very short basements. So the, these systems are quite tall. You need about six, six feet, six and a half feet of um, clearance. While we would love to, to um, be able to put these in every home, um, I think that they might have to either make a shorter, wider unit or something, but uh, um, an on-demand heater, I think is a fairly decent option. Um, it is fossil fuel, but it's, uh, if you're gonna have a fossil fuel system, it's one of the fewer, um, Less bad, I guess, is how to say it. <laughs> yeah, so I think that is a quick That's overall awesome. of what happened. Your, um, why don't you unshare and we'll just um, give the mic over to Armin, the homeowner of this lovely Fall Creek home. Um, someday I'll live in Fall Creek, life goals. <laughs> anyway, uh, and the I'll best be painted house in town. <laughs> yeah, I'll be able to walk the things instead of be stuck in my stupid car. But um, Armin, love to know, you know, uh, how, why you decided to get in touch with Lamort and um, how you like your heat pumps sure. and uh, say hi to the folks. Sure, sure. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a small correction. We live in the north side neighborhood, which is the triangle that's uh, contained by Cascadilla Creek, uh, Route 13 and um, and uh, and uh, Cascadilla Street. So it's actually a separate neighborhood than Fall Creek, but we always get called Fall Creek because we're getting continually subsumed by the Fall Creek neighborhood in a good way. Um, yes, in my mind, it's the lowland. It's not yes, the hills, so. Yeah, the flats, you know. And uh, so so to answer your questions, first of all, um, I, I, I just jotted down some notes. My number one consideration for um, choosing a uh, heat pump um, is the same consideration that we used when choosing to um, switch uh, from a plug-in hybrid to a full electric car. Um, I care a great deal about the climate um, crisis, and I've been reading about it and studying it for years, like so many other people. And uh, one thing that I uh, learned recently, not too far, not too long ago, was um, the EPA. EPA has a website with dated information, dated back to 2018, where they compare the, um, the carbon footprint of the grid in every